God continues to call us. He continues to call us into new ways of being faithful. He's calling us to live as a missional church, leaving old habits behind and running toward the new opportunities that are being laid before us. It is our conviction that those who superintend must be freed to spend the majority of their time working in developing leaders and resourcing local churches to more effectively live the mission of Jesus Christ. Do we have all the details figured out? Of course not. Will there be some surprises along the way? Absolutely. Is it risky? You bet. But we believe there is far greater risk maintaining the status quo. Therefore, we recommend that beginning July 1, 2012, the number of districts within the Susquehanna Conference of the United Methodist Church will be set at seven, with an additional cabinet level position dedicated to leadership development, church vitalization, and new church starts. That is now before you for your discussion, and the floor is open for discussion. Microphone three. Microphone three. Good morning. Thank you. Marcy Nicholas, uh, Grace United Methodist Church, Harrisburg clergy. Um, I have no problem with the three bullet points that you have here. I think that's great. I think that's the direction uh, DS should move in. I just have a question about uh, what authority will the assistant to the DS have to make decisions and recommendations to churches? Obviously, the superintendent is still the one that has been given that authority, and the assistant to the DS will work under the accountability of the superintendent. Microphone six, please. Alice Padone, uh, Smith Hill, Honesdale, retired clergy. I wonder if we could clear up a little bit the linkage between the DS and the cabinet level position. It sounds almost as though they're duplicating services. In, in short, if we belong to a church and we want some assistance in resources, do we go to our DS or do we go to this new cabinet level? I'll let Mark. The answer, I think, would be yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> the cabinet level position that we're envisioning uh, would allow us to have a person who full-time with support staff would be able to help us as an annual conference really develop a strategy and, and to do that in a holistic way across the whole annual conference in the areas of leadership development, church vitalization, and very importantly, new church starts. We believe it's important for that person to be cabinet level so that they are involved in all of the work of the cabinet, specifically focusing in on uh, those areas within the life of our conference. Microphone five, please. Mary Reese, Grace United Methodist Church, downtown Harrisburg, clergy. I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask, and Mark, you might as well just stay by the podium there. Um, the first one is, my read of the discipline says that it is the district superintendent who has the responsibility for initiating complaints about a weakness in performance, and it is the district superintendent who is charged with the duty of oversight of pastors. Has that changed? Absolutely not. We are not in any way abdicating the supervisory role that we must play. And yet I heard you earlier say that uh, pastors who didn't want to see the superintendent, who weren't transformational, might not see the district superintendent? No. Yes? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think that, uh, yes, I said that, but I, the spirit of that uh, was certainly that we're going to invest our time uh, in training, equipping, and resourcing those churches that are desiring to be vital and those pastors that are desiring to be transformational. Microphone we will continue three, to do one-on-ones every 
every year with pastors. Microphone three, please. Warm of Aqua Extension Ministries. Uh, I rise to support this uh, petition. Uh, first, I look at the district superintendents, many of who I count as friends and who I have heard in the halls of the conference office struggling to want to be in ministry and not be um, doing the minutia of administration. Um, and I think this is a great uh, petition. Uh, I think that this really will help move us towards making disciples for the transformation of the world. The only, uh, if the bishop will allow me, I do have a question. If we are setting this as July 1 of 2011, uh, is it 2012? The effective date of this would be 2012. Correct? Then never mind. <laughs> okay, microphone eight, please. Thank you, Dean Klepper, Otterbein, Borling Springs, Laity. Uh, I rise uh, to uh, present opposition to uh, this resolution. Uh, I agree with the, the bullet points and the needs, but reducing the number of superintendents from the current number down to seven would only change the, the structure. It would create a difference in uh, the number of people being served, the demographics of the two areas that are going to be joined together are going to create additional issues for us. And I just think that the, the items that were identified as needs, the uh, leadership development, church vitalization, the new starts, are things that should be done and can be done with our current number. I'm not sure that changing it down to seven is going to help that. Thank you, microphone two. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Stephen Drockler, New Cumberland District Lady at large. Those of you who know me at all know that I am probably the first one to rise and question things and to stir the pot and to challenge authority. And I spent a lot of time in the past week looking at this proposal and asking questions. And I came prepared to come to conference to stand up and stir the pot and challenge. But as I listened to this morning's presentation, as I saw the, the bullet points on, on the screen, and more importantly, as I read the confession that we all partook of, knew that no matter what, the status quo has to be gone. And no matter what, trying something different, there's no such thing in failing. You learn that the way that you were trying just didn't work, and you gotta try something new. My one concern out of all this is that I would hope you have 30 seconds thank you Bishop I would hope that there could be a really concerted effort to include the laity not just as a consulting role but in a partnering role because we the lay persons are in the church every Sunday we're there in the fields plowing and reaping the harvest and I think that we've got to find ways to bring laypersons in and to make them excited. Thank you, Thank Bishop. You. Microphone six, please. I'm Dave McCullough, coach, consultant, troubleshooter, and wolf hunter. <laughs> For 45 years, I've been forming disciples of Jesus for the transformation of the world. I've done what our mission statement says. And I've worked in the system. I've been a leader of the Board of Global Ministries, the Board of Discipleship, and for 12 years led the Congregational Vitalization Team. 
I have to admit that for many years I've just been disillusioned with the programs and the projects that we take home with us from annual conference, which ultimately I just throw in the trash because I don't think they're going to help anything. I have to say that I am strongly encouraged by the proposal before us. Uh, I am, I'm convinced that the system is designed for the results it's getting and the system that's currently in place has been a failure for 50 years. Uh, I remember asking you, Bishop, uh, at the clergy retreat a couple of years ago, when are we going to deal with absolutely necessary systemic change? And I felt you blew me off, and I was, I, I was hurt. <laughs> but obviously, you had already rolled up your sleeves and you were working on it. And I, I applaud you and your team. Microphone, microphone uh, five, please. Good morning, Arlene Smith, laity, Breezewood Wesley Charge. I came here with the idea that nothing was going to change. It is changing. We've had a traumatic experience this past year with pastor appointment. We've got a new pastor, and I come here and look around, and I hope that people here take home with them what I'm going to. It's not that council up there that's going to make a difference in any church, in any charge. It's me. I have to go back. I have to take what I've gotten from here. This new appointment, it wouldn't matter if we had 50 DSs. We need to make a difference, and we need to work up the ladder with what we need to motivate our people to do. Thank you so much, and it's not a shame on you, Bishop, that you're going this direction. It's a shame on us that we need to do more to support and help and change and bring more people to our church. Thank you. Microphone three, please. Now, now friends, there are times when I'd like to do that too, but remember, <laughs> we're in holy conferencing and we're not talking about winning, losing, we're talking about faithfulness. And so, rejoice inside, lift up the prayer or boo or whatever you need to do inside. <laughs> All right, microphone three and thank you for your patience. Ah, the patience of youth. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Bishop. Evan Michael Drexler, uh, Young People's Ministry Council. Change. Change is hard. Change is difficult. Um, all of us fear the unknown on some level. But isn't that where faith comes in? We have to have faith that God will guide our decisions and bring us to what change we might have to make, even if it scares us a little bit because I do trust God. I hope you do as well. Now, our DSs are overworked, um, and they do their work as well as they can, but they are still overworked. They are very gifted spiritual leaders. Uh, several of them are responsible for me standing here before you right now. Um, so I think that this realignment of resources would greatly aid in the training of transformational leaders, which is something that is absolutely essential in this day and age of the church. We cannot simply do what we've always done because it does not work. Thank you. Microphone two, please. Roger Menser, Bethlehem Church, uh, clergy in the York District. Um, when I served on cabinet, being appointed there by Bishop May uh, a long time ago, Bill Easton was a consultant that uh, we worked with, and he uh, shared a monograph that he had composed saying, if God had wanted me to uh, put out fires, he would have made me a fireman. And we have been struggling, to be honest with you, as superintendents when I served on cabinet and, and now beyond, obviously. What is our role? What, what is the best that we can do for the church? And uh, praise God, it's, it's come to bear some fruit that I think is, is crucial. I can't tell you the number of times that I've presented to churches uh, that I've served, couching it in experimental language that, let's try this. Let's experiment with this. Let's, let's run with it. If we don't like it, we'll go back to 11. <laughs> 
or however many it's decided upon. But, but let's try this. Uh, and all of those experiments, when they're well considered and, and, and the homework is done, turn out to be wild successes. And I think this has the, the potential of being such a success. And as far as uh, my position uh, in, in any way that I can help, uh, my superintendent is, uh, is Pastor Mark. You can count on me. Now you might have noticed that we're bending the rules a little. We've had six statements for and one against. We've had a lot of questions that have not actually been uh, uh, one side or the other. We also have uh, miles to go before we sleep. So um, I just raise that with you. Are you willing to continue this discussion for, okay, microphone three. I'm a Melton lawyer, Shepherdstown Church, New Cumberland District layperson. I have a question about the position of assistant to the district superintendent. It says this position is to uh, carry out some of the areas of administration and management as appropriate. We certainly have lay people that are capable in areas of administration and management. And I'm wondering why this position needs to be limited to the clergy. I know in some parts of our World Methodist Connection, uh, it's possible for lay people to be district superintendents and even bishops. And I know we have our own discipline here, um, but I wonder why this position couldn't be uh, filled by a lay person and get more lay involvement in this area. Milton, thank you for that, and I think that's a good reminder to us. We're already using laity uh, to do uh, some of that work within the districts. One of the pieces that laity still cannot do because of our discipline is conduct church or charge conferences. Um, and some of this work uh, the, the assisting DS will do might be convening some of those types of things. So that would be the only exception that we would need elders to, to do, do those things. But we certainly could use laity and some other pieces of that. Microphone Thanks. six, please. Joan Carey, Laity, Scranton District. I really like all the ideas that have been presented about change. I really like the changes in priority. I have a major concern with the time. Uh, the DSs work many, many hours. And I believe from the meeting that we had in the Scranton District, that if you add a new position, for example, the assistant to the DS, that person would have probably half of their hours interacting with the DS. So if it was 20 hours of time, probably seven and a half to 10 hours would be interacting time with the DS. That would leave 10 hours. That's two hours a day and the person has to travel because now you have a big, bigger geographical error, area. Excuse me. So my issue is, I think the plan is excellent. The ideas are excellent. I don't think the numbers work. Thank you. Thank you. Microphone three. I'm Rick Rosini, Mount Nittany United Methodist Church, State College District, laity. I am a businessman, a scientist, a farmer. I've chaired our local finance committee. I currently chair our local stewardship committee. I happily and joyfully serve on our missions team. I represent the Mount Nittany Church Council. We had a rollicking discussion last Tuesday night discussing your letter, Bishop Middleton. I bring two concerns from our church council. One, with all due respect to you, Bishop Middleton, and to the visioning team, the number seven feels like a compromise. Are you sure that you've reduced the number enough? Might the number not be three, or four, or even zero? I'm not speaking entirely for myself, although I support the question. I'm speaking for my church council. Second, our church council asked specifically if the assistant to the district superintendents was to be a appointed position and therefore funded out of your budget 
for a local position and therefore funded out of our budget. The concern with whether it's global or local really comes down to we don't feel that it is appropriate for the elders who are currently in full-time and full-time plus service positions to be distracted by superintendency responsibilities. Thank, Thank you. I think it will be very important that um, the superintendents have the ability uh, to choose persons that they believe they could work best with as the assistants. Uh, obviously, the bishop would need to affirm uh, those choices, and the funding uh, for paying those persons would come through these uh, realigning of resources that we will experience by reducing the number of districts. Microphone eight, please. Uh, Brian Meifelt, serving the Newton Hamilton Parish Altoona District clergy. My question is the cabinet level position uh, for development. How is that differing from the director of connectional ministries responsibilities and, and how is that going to help us so much more from what the director of connectional ministries might do? That's a really good question. That's what I've gotten thinking about for the last couple of years as well. Uh, as we said, we've been thinking about everything we do from the ground up. Uh, this particular position will have the responsibilities that are much, much more narrow in scope than what we on Connectional Ministries do. Um, right now, we don't have the staff or the time to do new church development. Uh, we're limited in what we can do in terms of personnel in a, at a district level uh, going in where uh, freeing up the superintendency to be able to do more of that work specifically at the district level uh, will be a big help. So we're, our division will be much more of the generalist and we'll be there to support and work and I sit, the reason I'm up here today is I sit on the program cabinet as well and uh, we already do some of that but this will be a specific piece. Uh, with very clear uh, directives around the new church development, uh, vital, revitalizing congregations, and uh, leadership development. And it'll be a partnership together. Microphone five. Pam Wright, Union Corners, Luther's Mills, both. Um, I rise, and this may shock those who have been talking to me lately, in support of this recommendation. I have been convicted by the Holy Spirit to trust, and therefore I will. My prayer, though, will continue to be that I know God will be in the details, and in the end it will be the will of God. My prayer will be that as we all stood and confessed together, that we will continue to make those confessions and that we will indeed continue to repent as a conference. And however that is shaped really isn't gonna make any difference. Thank you. Microphone six. James Fox, Valley's United Methodist Parish in uh, Spring Run, Pennsylvania and cetera, and cetera, up and down interst or Interstate 75, if you want to call it that. I question two things. I question establishing another level of bureaucracy on or near the cabinet level. And I also question whether we're really talking about reaching out and creating communities and leadership in those communities. Uh, Pastor Lawyer alluded to that, working with the laity who are very, very skilled in my area. Uh, is it possible we could reevaluate that part of the proposal and think more clearly about a base church and small churches or medium-sized churches related to it and forming communities in areas of our conference. My second is a request. Could someone be specific about 
where the boundaries will be for these new seven districts. We've heard you talk about them. I would love to hear or see where they're going to be. Could we be specific? Thank you. Just a reminder that the discipline gives the authority of the annual conference, gives authority to the annual conference to set the number of districts, then gives the authority uh, to the bishop in consultation with the cabinet to define the boundaries of those districts. We can't answer that question right now. For us to go ahead and do that intensive work before we knew whether or not the annual conference would even approve a reduction did not seem like good uh, time spent. So this immediately, if you approve this, we will start working on that. The bishop will start working on that. And hopefully beginning this fall, we will begin to have conversations around the annual conference, perhaps within those new boundaries, perhaps within the existing boundaries, to begin to lay all of that out, to get input, uh, and to begin to then own this together. So does that help? I can't, we cannot give you those boundaries today. Mike Frontu, please. Julia Piper, serving Reversburg and I'm at this parish, State College District. I come for you, come to you as a pastor who is going to be commissioned this year after eight years of being in ministry. Often my time in connection with my DS is calling her and saying what is going wrong. I want to move from being ready to being effective. And I need that connection where we can move forward in a positive way to make disciples for Jesus Christ. I'm where the rubber meets the road, God and I, and all this body of Christ. We need to be together and let God work the details as we move along. I speak in favor of it. Okay, microphone one, please. Bishop, thank you. Kathy Kind, Christ Community Sealands Growth Clergy. I'd like to call the question, please. Friends, the question has been called. Now, what that means is, if you would like to continue debate and conversation, you would vote against it. If you feel you're ready to vote and it's time to vote, you would vote for it. So let's try this. If you support that call for the question, would you lift a hand? Any opposed, same sign. Then the, call, the question is called. Please remove to your... The tongue still isn't working, is it? Please move to your seats and we are ready to vote. If you would support this proposal as printed on page 57 of your program book, we recommend that beginning July 1st, 2012, the number of districts within the Susquehanna Conference of the United Methodist Church will be set at seven with an additional cabinet level position dedicated to leadership development, church vitalization, and new church starts. If you would support that, would you lift a hand? Any opposed, same sign. Then it is supported by a large majority with some exceptions. And so we want to listen to all of you. And thank you very much for this. Thank you very much.